I'm here at one of my apiaries and I'm building a zest hive. Uh, this is a hive that was designed by Bill Summers and if those of you who listen to my podcast will have heard my uh, recent interview with him. And uh, his hive was so interesting looking that I decided to build one of my own. So here it is, well here it is the beginnings of it. And what I've done here is I've actually built it directly on um, and incorporating one of Brother Adam's original concrete plinths that he used for his um, Dadent hives. And you can see I've used a uh, fairly substantial, uh, well it's just three by three um, treated timber here for the, for the base. And on top of it are these insulating blocks. These particular ones are 600 mil long and uh, 215 I think wide and 100 deep so they're pretty substantial but they are quite light because they're made of um, what, what uh, Bill called aircrete which is a, an aerated form of um, concrete I guess and so they're easy to move around. They are very brittle unfortunately that's what one downside of them but they do have a good um, insulating property so and there's two types here there's the white ones and there's these grey ones and I'm going to be using both of them uh, to build this zest hive. So I'm going to do this in, uh, in stages and um, hopefully splice all this together into something that's vaguely coherent. Um, the hive itself is going to be uh, quite deep and uh, you can see this is one of the um, queen excluders. You can see the, the sort of depth we've got here. It's something like 18 inches deep and it will take standard um, British National frame, so it, 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 the width will incorporate the uh, the BS frame. So obviously it's three times, well it's actually not obviously, but it's three times the depth of a standard BS super frame. So yeah, so it's a big deep long trough and it's capable of holding two full-size colonies. So it'll be a very interesting project and I'm going to film this in stages and we'll see where we go. So the first thing to do is to work out the layout. So um, the important thing obviously is that the Queen Excluder uh, and any dividers, well, well these, the, the Queen Excluder has actually become a divider by simply filling them in with a piece of plastic. But the important thing is the Queen Excluder fits comfortably um, but doesn't allow the passage of Queens, obviously, so there's a, there's a fairly tight um, fit required, but not so tight that it that it uh, can't move in and out easily, but, you know, tight enough to keep these out. So the, is it, the way I've done that, or why I'm hoping to do that anyway, is to lay the Queen Excluder onto a centre line, and then I've drawn a line either side, um, and I'm going to extend that the entire length of the hive, um, so that that will give me a, a guideline for putting the side blocks in place and uh, then you know fine, fine adjustment will, will then follow. So here's the uh, tram lines that I've drawn as guides. I put some blocks in place. On um, Bill Summer's original video for building the Zest Hive he builds the whole thing out of these long white bricks. These are 600 mil bricks um, but in fact I've only got a dozen of these and I need uh, rather more than that um, so I'm going to be using grey blocks on the next level. Uh, something to watch out with this this white stuff particularly is that it's uh, really really easy to damage. You can see here I've managed to knock a whole corner off and I was hardly touching the thing at the time. So uh, despite you know, treating these things with tender loving care, they, uh, they, do, they do fracture, they do um, split. So it might be worth having some uh, filler material handy and I'll, I will go over this hive uh, when I've um, finished it. I'll, I'll fill in the gaps and the, the cracks and the crevices just for the sake of tidiness and before painting it. Uh, so anyway that's that's what we've got so far now obviously you can see straight away that I'm gonna have to do some cutting uh, luckily this stuff is quite soft and it'll cut with a, uh, a, a carpenter saw which is what I'm going to use um, obviously you need to you want to be using your uh, your old saw uh, for this not not your best one so here I am carefully cutting through the block with an old 
carpenter saw and it's pretty easy actually. So there's the first layer in place. Um, something I've noticed about this material when you're working with it is that it's very dusty, especially when you're sawing obviously. Um, so it's probably a good idea to have a, a hand brush nearby so you can just keep the dust uh, out of the way a bit because if it gets into the joints between the, between the uh, blocks then it's going to kind of distort things a little bit and faces aren't going to mate up properly. Um, one thing that occurred to me when I was talking to um, Bill was, you know, why don't you use some sort of jointing compound, some, you know, some sort of mortar or uh, polyfiller or something like that to, um, to, to join the bricks together and, uh, so there aren't you know, gaps and, and, and potential drafts and things. Um, I can't actually honestly remember what Bill said about that, but um, I think I am going to point this up a little bit with filler because I'm not totally happy about the um, the, the joints, uh, the way you know, because it's like you don't really want drafts in a beehive, do you? So um, I will I will patch up those uh, those gaps. So now on with the next layer, and then we can uh, see what the thing's going to look like. Okay, well I've got the brickwork done now, and I'm I'm reasonably happy with it. Uh, I, there's a couple of things I'm not that happy about. One is the um, really it's only gravity and and, and uh, wishful thinking that's keeping this thing stable right now. Um, these blocks are uh, quite light, pretty easy to move. I mean if I knocked against this um, accidentally I would certainly knock it out of shape, no question. Um, which which isn't really good because the there is quite a close uh, tolerance here. You can see the, the Queen Excluder has to fit obviously uh, along the entire length, both width and depth. Now it fits quite nicely actually depth wise. Um, it sits on the bottom and it sits on the top simultaneously which means obviously you've got to use um, these bricks to, to, to the exact dimensions that these were made for otherwise that isn't going to happen. Um, I'm pretty confident that queens can't get past this. Uh, it's a good enough fit all the way along. So that's good, um, but of course the slightest movement of one of these blocks would knock that out of kilter and potentially create a, um, a gap for, for queens to get through. So my inclination, um, my, my, my first instinct was to try and you know, fix these blocks together with something and I think that's the instinct I'm going to follow because that makes, that's what makes sense to me. Now there's all sorts of possible solutions here. Uh, I, I, thought about using PVA as a, as a bonding agent which is a possibility and um, also I can use I, I think probably what I'm going to end up using is um, is uh, a, a white filler you know polyfiller material because that will fill in the cracks and bond the, the bricks um, I think sufficiently well for this purpose uh, the other thing I'm going to do which is a requirement um, which I'll come to in a second is make a wooden frame for the top and that may also help to hold it together so that's the next stage. Right so here are the frames, uh, well these are some of the frames, there's just four here at the moment I've got a whole box to go in right here um, but these, these are the frames so they are as you can see quite deep they are equivalent to three uh, BS uh, super frames and they have this uh, T-shape moulding, which is which Bill says is crucial to them building straight comb, which I which I can certainly believe. And what uh, Bill does is to dip the top of the frame, the top section of the frame, right to below the first T in molten wax, and that gives a, a guide for the bees to start building their comb down. I think that's a perfectly valid way of doing it. Uh, I, I don't know, I may or may not do that. I doubt I will do that, to be honest. I, I'm more likely to um, just paint some, some beeswax along the edge or even just rub the, the edge with beeswax. I'm not sure yet. That will come to that in due course. But the, the main thing I want to talk about now is the next stage because the frames, as you can see, rest directly on the concrete blocks, as does, of course, the Queen Excluder. And they've got, um, they've got built-in spacers, as you can see, like this, at top and bottom which stops the hive, well, stop, will stop the frame swinging around too much once they're um, in use. Um, not, that I, not that I suppose the bees play swings too much at night, but who knows what they get up to, eh? Um, anyway, so 
the next stage is to put this wooden frame, and this is just a length of uh, 2 by one here, um, or, or 50 by 25 if you prefer, in millimetres, and um, this is going to surround the tops of the frames, uh, just inside the edge of the, uh, the concrete blocks, and so it occurs to me that this frame could be fixed down into these blocks. Now I'm not actually sure, never having worked with these blocks before, I'm not actually sure what the correct um, type of screw would be or whether I'd have to put plugs in there or what. I'll, I'm gonna have to ask a, a builder about this and try and get to find out what I can screw into this stuff or I might just experiment myself. But anyway, if I can fix this wooden frame when it's made down into the, um, into the concrete that will help to stabilize at least the top row of bricks and I'm hoping that gravity and friction will, will do their job on the on the lower row of bricks so I guess that will help. Um, obviously the purpose of this frame is to enable you to put a roof on top uh, because if you didn't have that frame there you'd have a gap between the roof and the bricks which obviously is not a good idea and um, I should mention, perhaps, uh, those of you who haven't seen uh, Bill's video yet or, or listened to the interview, um, that he uses upper entrances. Now, I don't use upper entrances on any of my hives, and so I was quite interested to, to uh, try and learn from Bill why he uses upper entrances. And his theory is that um, there is a certain amount of... The, the, the best way of dealing with ventilation in a hive is uh, cross-ventilation at... A, a higher level and he says that that causes the bees to store their honey below the brood which which is interesting and um, completely against what they normally do because obviously the the brood is normally the the warmest part of the hive and the air the warm air rising from the brood nest over the uh, open nectar is what evaporates the water from the nectar so I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to see what's going to happen once there are bees in here, but obviously that's not going to happen this year because it's now the end of October. I won't be putting bees in here um, yet a while. But uh, that gives me time to sort of contemplate and to think about solutions that might uh, make this hive as a, a wasp come to check it out already. I think it's a wasp. Um, so what I might do, because there's going to be essentially two, uh, this is going to be divided between two colonies, there's going to be a central divider and there's going to be a colony one side, colony the other side, I could run two colonies side by side, one with an upper entrance, one with a lower entrance, just for the fun of experimenting to see what difference it makes, if it indeed it does. So I might have a crack at that. Anyway, now then, what's next? Um, right, I'm going to build the wooden frame and then we'll come back. Right, so here's the uh, wooden frame. I haven't screwed it together yet, but this is, this is just to show you how it works. And uh, you can see what it does is create a, uh, a, a draft-proof barrier or an insulating seal to some extent between the uh, inside and the outside of the hive, um, such that the frames and the um, quid extruder and so on can, can be moved around inside it. And also so that you can put, if you want to put uh, standard BS National frames in here, either to transfer bees uh, from them or to them, uh, you can certainly do that. And also, the other thing you could do in this hive um, is to transfer bees to and from top bars uh, for top bar hives, which is something I actually intend to do in here. Um, I have got an, a long hive for that purpose as well, but this, this one will do the job too. Uh, so anyway, because you're... Uh, well, yeah, perhaps I should say you can see I've got um, top bar hives being built here and, and, and established here, so that's one reason to be able to do it on site. Anyway, so um, what have I learned from, from putting this together? Well, I've already mentioned the, my slight nervousness about the, uh, the ease with which the blocks can be moved. That's something I will be dealing with. Um, I'm also a little bit uneasy about the fact that the surface of these blocks, well, in fact, the entire uh, content of these blocks is, is rather absorbent. It, feel, it, it feels like um, it would soak up moisture like crazy. And now on the outside, if it, so if, if it rains on these blocks, if, if these blocks get wet on the outside and then that water evaporates, you're going to get a, um, a chilling effect because of evaporative cooling. So I'm going to be painting this hive uh, to, well, partly, to, partly for that reason also because it's not that pretty 
as it is. Um, so I'm going to be painting it green. In fact, I've got some, uh, I've got a bucket of paint here ready. Um, but the other reason is so that it doesn't actually get wet, because then it then it can't absorb water, and therefore the evaporative cooling effect won't kick in. On the inside, um, I guess you could say that the blocks are going to soak up excess moisture, and therefore to some extent regulate the humidity of the hive. Now that's that's um, I think a likely uh, occurrence. However, I, I, I'm also uh, given that bees like to line the inside of their hives with propolis, um, again, I'm not totally sure that's the right approach, but um, I, I'm giving, uh, I suppose what I'm trying to do here is to, um, is to follow Bill's, Bill Summers' um, guidance, because he's been running these hives for 10 years, so, you know, basically he knows a lot about more about how the bees behave in it than I do. Um, but I'm also going to make some modifications the most important of which possibly is the roof because what Bill does is to, to having got to this stage he then puts six of these white bricks on top of the wooden frame as a as an insulating roof. Now that's all very well and, and good in terms of insulation but um, personally I don't want to have to move six concrete blocks every time I inspect my bees. Okay they're light blocks etc but they are very fragile, and uh, it, it, it's a, it would be a nuisance, to put it mildly. So what I'm going to do, in fact, is to... I'm going to get cut a piece of uh, Reflectix, the um, aluminium foil stuff. You can actually see some on... I, I've made a, a temporary roof, a uh, drop-over roof, for, a, for an old Dadent hive there, using the Reflectix. And so I'm going to use that, I'm going to put a sheet of it over the entire length of the hive, inside the wooden frame, uh, resting on on top of the frames in fact um, and then on top of that I'm going to put I think probably two inches of um, Celotex which is the uh, you know foam urethane foam based foil covered uh, insulating material and I'm going to use that essentially as the roof and then I'm going to put a wooden lining or, or casing around that so that it actually drops over uh, either drops over the woodwork or drops over the concrete probably the concrete um, so that I can lift the whole thing off. Now that's going to be a fairly unwieldy roof, but it will be light, um, and I shall make sure that I build it light too. That will, I think, make a bit of a difference to the um, to the to the usability of this hive. But you know, so far I'm I'm quite happy with the way it's gone together. Um, you've got to watch out for this critical dimension uh, in, in terms of the width. That's the only thing you've got to be really careful with because you don't want any gaps that queens can squeeze through. Um, so that's got to be even right throughout. But other than that it's not too difficult to put together. The blocks are easy to cut. Um, I'm going to be sticking them together with, uh, with some gunk. And uh, once it's painted I think that will look quite, ti quite tidy and uh, less, less like a concrete tomb which it kind of does at the moment. So there we go. Um, I might come back. I'm not. I'm not going to do the roof today. So I might come back and do another video later on. But that's the zest hive for the time being.